NATO invaded Russia. And so there will be a Russian response. That's the other thing this, uh, this senator said is uh, that sometime in the not too distant future, and he said, you'll know it when it happens, but Ukraine is going to pay a very, very heavy price. And um, he said, so too will NATO. You guys think I'm joking? The German military just tried to slip something through. We'd also like to revere the SS and the SD and, um, and all those other Nazi organizations. We want them to be revered too. And fortunately, there was somebody in German civil society that went, what? No, no. And the German army had to pull back. But the fact that the German army thought that this was a good thing tells you about the sickness of that. Um, you know, this is scary. This is scary. We have Germany acting like, you know, this is a cool thing to have German tanks um, on Russian soil killing Russians. Um, it's not a cool thing. It's not, uh, it's, it's, it's a very dangerous thing. Welcome back, dear viewers. In today's comprehensive report, we delve deep into the escalating crisis on Ukraine's Eastern Front, where the Ukrainian military faces not only a formidable Russian adversary, but also growing internal dissent. Inspector Scott Ritter has been closely monitoring the developments in Kursk and his insights have shed light on the catastrophic consequences of Ukraine's recent strategic missteps. The Kursk region, once a symbol of Ukrainian resistance, has now become the focal point of a devastating series of setbacks. These setbacks have sparked a chorus of voices within Kiev demanding the dismissal of Commander Sersky. His leadership, once hailed as the bulwark against Russian advances, is now under intense scrutiny as losses mount and morale plummets. But the repercussions extend beyond the battlefield. The political landscape in Kiev is shifting as frustration with the military's failures boils over into open calls for change. This report will unpack these developments, highlighting the increasing number of volunteers enlisting in the Russian military, a trend that underscores a significant shift in the dynamics of this conflict. As we explore these critical issues, we invite you to consider the broader implications of what is unfolding. The battle for Kursk is not just a military engagement, it's a battle for the very soul of Ukraine's war effort. Now let's start with the harsh realities faced by the Ukrainian forces at the front lines, a front that has become synonymous with the tragic consequences of strategic miscalculations. But the gravity of these losses isn't confined to the battlefield, the political fallout in Kiev is reaching a fever pitch with significant ramifications for Ukraine's leadership and its future course in this conflict. In Kiev, the corridors of power are buzzing with tension and uncertainty. Inspector Scott Ritter, who has consistently provided a critical analysis of Ukraine's military strategies, has highlighted the growing internal pressures faced by the Ukrainian government. Ukrainian MP Alexei Goncharenko has taken the unprecedented step of publicly calling for the resignation of Commander Sirsky, accusing him of leading Ukraine's military into a series of disastrous engagements. Goncharenko's critique is scathing our military leadership needs a drastic overhaul new faces, new strategies. If Sirsky refuses to step down, it is imperative that the government intervenes. We cannot afford to let this man lead us to further ruin Goncharenko's words have struck a chord within the Ukrainian political establishment, where there is growing concern that the continued leadership of Sirsky could spell disaster for Ukraine's defense. This internal dissent is further compounded by accusations from other political figures, such as MP Mariana Bulogaya, who has gone so far as to accuse Sirsky of recklessly sacrificing troops and mismanaging critical military resources. But Lugaya's allegations add fuel to the fire, painting a picture of a military command structure in disarray one that is increasingly disconnected from the realities on the ground. As Kyiv grapples with this internal crisis, the Russian military is seizing the opportunity to press its advantage in Kursk with devastating consequences for Ukrainian forces. As the conflict in Kursk intensifies, the battle have brought to light the sheer scale of Ukraine's strategic failure. While Kyiv is engulfed in political turmoil, the situation on the ground in Kursk tells a grim tale of Ukrainian failure and Russian success. Chechen Special Forces Commander Major General Apti Aladinov has been at the forefront of the Russian offensive, and his recent statements reveal both the confidence and the ruthlessness driving the Russian campaign. Our warriors are like tigers on the battlefield while the enemy is being decimated, Aladinov declared, reflecting the brutal reality that Ukrainian forces face in Kursk. Aladinov's rhetoric, while fiery, is underpinned by cold, hard facts the Ukrainian blitzkrieg strategy, modeled after historical lightning warfare, has crumbled under the relentless pressure of Russian counterattacks. 
Initially, Ukrainian forces made some gains, but these were short-lived. By the end of the third day, Russian forces had not only halted the Ukrainian advance, but had begun a counteroffensive that has since gained significant ground. The losses for Ukraine have been staggering, both in terms of personnel and equipment. Entire battalions have been decimated and critical supply lines have been cut off, leaving Ukrainian troops isolated and vulnerable. The failure of Ukraine's military strategy has not gone unnoticed in the West, where opinions are increasingly divided on how to proceed with support for Kyiv. Scott Ritter has long warned that the West's involvement in Ukraine could lead to unforeseen consequences, and his predictions seem to be materializing. As the battle rages on, the geopolitical ramifications are being hotly debated across the Atlantic. In a recent Twitter exchange, former U.S. President Donald Trump and tech mogul Elon Musk weighed in on the conflict with Trump delivering a blistering critique of the Biden administration's handling of the situation. This war should have never happened, Trump asserted. Biden's reckless policies have led to the deaths of nearly a million people. Ukraine is on the brink of collapse facing one of the most formidable militaries in the world, and they are woefully underprepared. Trump's comments reflect a growing sentiment in the West that Ukraine may be fighting a losing battle. The question now being asked in Washington and European capitals is whether continued support for Ukraine is a wise investment or if it's time to reconsider the strategy. On one hand, military officials are warning that the situation is deteriorating rapidly and that without significant new support, Ukraine may not be able to sustain its defense. On the other hand, political leaders are increasingly concerned about the long-term implications of an open-ended commitment to what is increasingly seen as a futile effort. But as debates rage on in the West, the situation on the ground in Ukraine continues to deteriorate with potentially catastrophic consequences for Ukrainian morale and military capability. In a recent interview, Mr. Scott emphasized the psychological toll that prolonged conflict takes on military forces, particularly when strategies fail to achieve their intended objectives. On the front lines, the psychological toll of the conflict is beginning to show in the Kursk region, where some of Ukraine's most elite units have been deployed there is growing disillusionment among the troops. Initially confident in their mission, these soldiers are now grappling with the harsh reality that the situation is far more dire than they were led to believe. A senior officer, speaking under the condition of anonymity, described a unit in crisis we were supposed to be the spearhead of Ukraine's defense, but now we're just trying to survive. The orders we're receiving make no sense, and our losses are mounting with no end in sight. This sentiment is not isolated. Across the region, Ukrainian soldiers are beginning to question the very purpose of their mission. What was once seen as a critical counteroffensive has now become a desperate fight for survival, with little hope of achieving the objectives that were originally set. The realization that the Kursk offensive may have been a strategic blunder is spreading, and with it, a growing sense of fatalism. For these soldiers, the war is no longer about winning, it's about making it through the day. As Ukrainian forces grapple with the grim realities on the ground, President Putin is taking steps to ensure that Russia's gains are solidified and that any potential unrest is swiftly dealt with. Russia's strategic reinforcements in Kursk are a clear indication of Moscow's commitment to securing a decisive victory. In the face of these developments, President Putin has made a decisive move to bolster Russia's position in the conflict. By appointing Lieutenant General Alexei Diamin, a trusted military strategist and former personal bodyguard to oversee operations in Kursk, Putin is signaling his commitment to securing a decisive victory. Diamin, who has a reputation for being both ruthless and highly effective, has been tasked with not only leading the military campaign, but also ensuring that order is maintained in the newly acquired territories. His appointment is a clear indication that Russia intends to not only hold, but expand its control over these strategic regions. At the same time, reports from Russian intelligence suggest that there is growing dissatisfaction with President Zelensky among Ukraine's Western allies. Some in Washington and Brussels are reportedly exploring the possibility of replacing Zelensky with a more manageable leader, one who might be more amenable to negotiations with Russia. The name that has surfaced most frequently in these discussions is Arsen Avakov, the former Ukrainian Minister of Internal Affairs. Avakov, who has long been seen as a power broker within Ukraine, could represent a shift towards a more pragmatic approach to the conflict, one that Western leaders believe might pave the way for a negotiated settlement. With these strategic moves, the stage is set for the next and possibly most critical phase of this conflict one that could determine the ultimate fate of Ukraine. 
As we conclude today's in-depth report, the conflict in Ukraine appears to be reaching a critical turning point. Inspector Scott Ritter's analysis suggests that the failed blitzkrieg in Kursk may very well mark the beginning of the end for Kyiv's war efforts. The failed blitzkrieg in Kursk has exposed deep vulnerabilities within the Ukrainian military, and the political fallout in Kyiv suggests that a major shift in leadership may be on the horizon. For Russia, the signs are clear a decisive victory is within reach, and the momentum is firmly on their side. As Russian forces continue their advance and Ukrainian morale collapses, the question is no longer if Russia will achieve its objectives, but when. As this conflict enters what may be its final, most brutal phase, we will continue to bring you the latest updates and analyses. The stakes have never been higher, and the consequences of this war will be felt for generations to come. Thank you for joining us tonight. Stay informed, stay vigilant, and be sure to tune in for our next broadcast. Until next time, keep watching as history unfolds before our eyes and remember every battle, every decision brings us closer to the resolution of this conflict.